the vanilla gorilla chase sherman we were talking about him in the intro but he cashed in on that plus 250 tko prop and aj i want you to look at these props here you can clearly see they the odds makers gave chase sherman no chance of winning aside from the tko prop and what does he deliver on the tko prop as for Jared Vandera, kind of the same situation, but he him winning a decision was much more favorable. Plus 235 right there. Came so close, man. Literally, he came, what, two minutes away from cashing in on a decision. But, you know, life happens. He's swing and bang. And when you're in a heavyweight, all it takes is one one of these, you know, knuckles to, to land on you. And things go rough, man. Chase Sherman thought he was winning the fight come uh, round three. And he told Michael Bisping that. He said, oh, yeah, I thought I was winning. Judge scorecards, I mean, they, they thought otherwise. Vandera was doing a little more, right? He wasn't just boxing. He was kickboxing, right? He was dropping in those leg kicks. Every exchange, he was... So for every one-two, Chase Sherman landed. Vandera landed the one-two and the three on the leg kick, right? So he had a great plan, I thought. And I thought the game plan ultimately was, let's do the smart thing. Let's beat up the legs of Chase Sherman, take away all that power, and then we can kind of pick him apart at will. The problem for Jared Vandera, in my opinion, in this fight keep his hands down low man and that's good because you don't see where the jab's coming from there all the combos are coming up from weird spots so you don't really see him the bad part is you have a dude with nuclear bombs in his hands and chase sherman who's just dropping them on you but chase sherman made a great point aj and i actually want your opinion on this he says i think the judges are counting too much for clean sh or they're not counting clean shots as much as they should be they count a lot of the shots that get deflected and parried a little bit like they're counting those the equivalent of a clean shot landed do you think that a clean shot i'm talking about a right hook boom right there on the chin Ooh, wobbled him a little bit you think that should count like if, if a if a if that counts for two three points that a deflected shot should only count for like one one and a half point like do you kind of view it that way or, or how do you see it I mean, I, it's weird because I don't really think uh, a deflected or a blocked shot should be counted so much as a, as a point for the for the attacker. You know what I'm saying? It, it, and I always go back to the leg kick situation. You know, somebody throws a leg kick at you, you check it. It hurts them more than it hurts you. Should that be your point? I don't really know because you're not the one initiating the action. You're just defending the action. It's a, it's, it's a hard one, but I do think that clean shots should count for more because you're actually sneaking one past the guard. You're catching them when they're not expecting it, and I think that's really what should count. I don't know if I should if, if blocks should count for either opponent or you know for the, for the offensive or the defense. What do you think? Well, it's funny because Aljamain Sterling, I was watching a video when he was talking about that Sean O'Malley, Pedro Munoz, and he was saying Sean O'Malley's talking about, oh, I get a point because I checked it, and that hurts him. And he was like, well, no, you're just the same thing for takedown. Do you get a point because you defended a takedown? No, you just did what you're supposed to do. You avoided getting put on your back on the mat. Cool. In this spot, you avoided taking, really absorbing that damage. So I, it's it's kind of tough, man. It, it's tough because of the way that the fights are scored today with the boxing system. It's just tough. It's not it's not the same thing. MMA does need kind of its own unique system, eventually. But for now, this is the parameters that we're working with. The numbers, man. Chase Sherman was up on the numbers. 137 total strikes for Sherman, 109 for Vandera, and this is significant and total. Um, you know, both sides. So. Sherman, I mean, I don't really know. It's kind of weird because you outstruck him, but you were losing. But, you know, either way, Jared Vandera was ultimately doing the right thing, man. He was, he was doing the right thing. He was putting it on him. But you leave yourself open. You leave yourself vulnerable like that. You get caught. And Chase Sherman, much needed win. Now, my question to you, AJ, is the one that I posed in the beginning for the pre-show. And I said, I think these two men are fighting for their jobs. And you agreed with me. However, even though Chase Sherman gets the big win, you still move to 4-9 and nine in uh, the UFC. Jared Vandera is now, I believe, 1-5 in, in the UFC. There is a possibility that both men get cut. Even though I still think they're both great prospects in this very shallow heavyweight division, there is a possibility both men get cut. What do you think of it? I, th I think there's always a possibility that these guys get cut, especially with the records they have. Their saving grace is it's a very shallow division in the heavyweight. And Shea Sherman already got cut and then got let back mm -hmm. in. So I don't know if we'll be seeing this yo-yo effect that uh, the, the UFC matchmakers will be putting out to these heavyweights. I think they just need bodies. You know, They just need bodies for the heavyweight division. When stuff like this can happen, let them fight. Let them, you know, let them have a, a little bit longer of a career in the UFC just because you, you need those numbers. Unless we're just talking... You know, you only want 10 fighters in the heavyweight division. Then, you know, then we might be seeing some cuts. And as much as if these guys were in lightweight and they had the they had the records they had, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's chopping block season for both of them. But that's just not the case with heavyweights. And, and you know, fortunately slash unfortunately, we just don't have the numbers in the heavyweight division to actually make that, you know, uh, a, a reality. Do you, do you think that or do you think they're actually, you know, on the chopping block? Uh, you know, I, I feel on both. So I think 
Uncle Dana can do anything. You know what I mean? He could be like, ah, I just want to bring in because the contender series is actually about to start up in a couple of weeks. So he could be like, all right, y'all are out. Let's make some room for the new contender series boys that are coming in. But this is really what I want to go to when we're talking about this situation. So great win by Chase Sherman, of course. But I want to.